everyone, we are Team Dyer. We stand for Dark Internet Research. We are a team comprised of 10 students under the mentorship of John Hoffman, and our librarian is Eric Cartier. Um, presenting to you today is myself, Shariah G, Nathan Sampson, Camilla Padlock, and Patricia Vandrick, and hope you enjoy our presentation. So to begin, I will give a brief overview on what the dark internet is. Originally, the dark internet started off as an onion routing project for the Defense Advanced Research Project Agency, or DARPA, under the U.S. Navy. It was a communication tool and a way for them to access unreachable network hosts, and this provided them a form of traffic analysis defense. Now, how do we access the dark internet? Like we access the conventional internet with Google Chrome or Safari, we can access the dark internet using the Tor browser. It only, it only accesses .onion sites, which is the equivalent of .com or .org. The way how it is set up is um, the program runs through relay and exit nodes. So the home computer or the user would start off with that, with their own IP address. Then it goes through this cloud of sorts and it bounces off between several different relay nodes. Each relay node has a different IP address, and each one encrypts, encrypts the traffic on, on its way, and then it releases at the final exit node, and that is the final IP address, which masks the original IP address. And this provides a heightened sense of anonymity. Now, what is found on the dark internet? Specifically on the Tor browser, which our research will be focus, focusing on, we comprise the list of a few big components. One is, digital crypt one is digital cryptocurrencies. Using your own personal credit cards defies the whole point of anonymity, so a popular cryptocurrency is Bitcoin. Um, and with Bitcoin, you can access different online marketplaces, and on these marketplaces, a few um, popular products to purchase <coughs> drugs and weapons. Um, on the other hand, there is a lack of censorship on the Tor browser. It's not regulated by anybody, um, so users, users use the Tor browser to circumvent government firewalls, um, such as citizens of China. Um, they also, users also go on the Tor browser to communicate with each other. Um, a few of the more popular uses of communication are terrorists. They recruit members through the dark internet. Whistleblowers use um, use the Tor browser to release information on their organizations or companies. And a popular example of this is Edward Snowden. He used the Tor browser. And journalists they use the they use chat rooms online to anonymous, anonymously communicate with their sources. And finally, there are a lot of unique communities that we find that is exclusive to the dark internet. The users somehow unite when they are faced with threats, even though they are completely anonymous, they don't know one another, which we find very interesting. And there is also, whenever they are attacked, they come together to defend their privacy. We have two primary research objectives with our project. Team Dyer seeks to explore the dark internet in order to demonstrate the increase in dark internet markets and cryptocurrency, and also to further understand dark internet culture as it pertains to online marketplaces. And we have three main research questions. In what ways is the culture of the dark internet affected during times of crises? How does the consumer experience on marketplaces differ between the dark and traditional internet? And finally, what is the importance of cryptocurrencies in dark internet marketplaces? So as a team, we have hypothesized that during times of crisis, the Tor community will become unified to ensure the preservation of the Tor network and protect their anonymity. Tor marketplaces are also self-regulated and constantly changing. And then lastly, the use of Bitcoin on the Tor network alters consumer experience in contrast to the conventional currencies on the traditional internet, such as credit cards. <coughs> So the first portion of our methodology consists of uh, documenting firsthand the experience of an actual dark internet marketplace user. And more specifically to do this, we will be hiring a number of ghost writers to uh, write a paper based on a prompt given to us by the University of Maryland English Department. And um, these purchases will be made on the traditional internet as well as the dark internet. And we will be, uh, be conducting these payments through US dollars and Bitcoin. And then we will see if these um, various factors have any effect in the speed of the completion of the product or its final quality. Um, so as I previously mentioned, Bitcoin is 
very important to our study because of its widespread usage on the dark internet. It, um, it can be obtained through many different ways, one of which being going to a site such as Coinbase.com and using traditional currency like US dollars to convert to the cryptocurrency. And then once that currency is obtained, it can then be uh, used on several dark internet marketplaces with increased anonymity, which is why it's so popular. And um, so due to the volatile nature of the dark internet, it's been frequently affected by lots of crises events. Some of you may have heard of some of these, like the closure of the Silk Road and other dark internet marketplaces. Um, so the second portion of our methodology involves analyzing how communities within the dark internet react to these crises. Specifically, we'll be doing that by going to message boards and forums on the dark internet, analyzing their texts and how they relate to key events of the crises, and seeing if there's any recurring patterns in traffic or communication that occur as a result of these crises. <coughs> Research is currently going through the stages where we're working really hard to get to our to get to the fruit of our research, like Dr. Cole mentioned. Right now, we're fundraising to purchase our Bitcoin. We cannot accept federal funds, so gemstone money doesn't apply here. So we're raising money our own way. We're also pending approval from the UMD English Department to use their writing prompts for our ghostwriting project. And we're also identifying our ghostwriters. We're communicating with them to determine their pricing and to see if their source is credible and if we want to use them as a reliable service. And finally, for the textual analysis section of our project, we are selecting sites to use for the communication analysis to see if they have viable data for us to use. So hopefully, if all goes well at the end of our research, we would have we would like to see the following anticipated results. With the marketplace experience, we would like to have a quantitative comparison of currencies and gain insight into the user experience of transferring currencies from US dollars over to Bitcoin and then using Bitcoin on the marketplaces. We would also like to see if there are any economic trends on online marketplaces, such as the, sh the shutdown of the Silk Road. We would like to see where all that revenue was going. And we would like to see if there's a quality of if there's a difference in the quality of products between the traditional internet and the dark internet. In the communication analysis portion of our research, we would like we would hopefully see that there's an increase in communication between users following crises. And also, we would like to determine if there's a correlation between media attention, uh, such as references in popular TV shows and movies or mentions in national newspapers. We would like to see a correlation between that and the usage on the dark internet. So in conclusion, our goal is to analyze implications of the dark internet in regard, uh, dark internet culture in regards to the marketplaces and different crisis events responses. And also, our goal is to create new knowledge on emerging topics. The dark internet is slowly coming about in media and um, as technology is continuing to grow. We, our goal is to create as much knowledge as as we transition into challenges, a lot of challenges that we faced was one, again, the lack of common knowledge. We had to go off of small research information that we had and make our own. Another one was negative perception. Um, the media portrays the dark internet as a hotbed of illegal activity, where we had to move from that mindset and realize that it's actually a community. Another thing was the instability of the dark internet. Um, when we first started off, we were um, researching the Silk Road, which ended up being uh, seized by the FBI. Then Silk Road 2.0 was seized by the FBI. And then we, um, re we started researching Agora, another marketplace, which took itself off the market so they won't be seized by the FBI. Um, another one was the possibility of publications of similar research and then fundraising. As I said earlier, that we were not able to use federal funds, so we had to um, fundraise our own money with a small plug that if you wish to donate to our team, you can go to der.ps slash dir or dire. Now, even though we have all these challenges, our team composition and process really helped us overcome all of these things. So one, uh, our team meetings, the way how to organize, we have an open discussion forum, so we we basically just like to bounce all of our ideas off of each other and help expand and grow upon. And it really helps us get new ideas flowing and one person thinks of something and somebody else can expand up, it's really great. Um, and also a weekly agenda, it helps us keep on task and keep moving along, especially since everything's changing on the dark internet every single day. It helps us keep track of what's going on and what we need to do to help be flexible. Additionally, our team roles help us get the ball rolling every single week. 
Um, so we assign specific tasks and duties in our in our self in our self assigned um, assignments. Uh, an example of a duty is Jared, he acts as our team mediator, so if there are any problems, we can go to him and he can sort it out. Um, and sub-teams work really well for us, even though we're only 10 members, it's a pretty small team, but sub-teams really help us separate everything and get assignments completed really quickly. Lastly, our advice to new and developing team is one, to get to know your team. Um, one thing that works great for us is that at the beginning of every meeting we have a facilitator question. So it's a question just randomly about anything, such as last week's was what's your favorite amusement park. Um, so it just gets to, we get to open up to each other each time that we meet. And also team bonding activities. Lastly, be flexible. We are all students. We all have um, different schedules. So it's just important that we work around each other's schedules and be willing to try new things. Also, learn what works for your team. Our team works best in sub-teams. So it's about getting to know what you um, and your team are best at doing. And then lastly, find your best method of communication. For us, it's grouping, but for each team it could be different. So it's important that you find out the best way to communicate with each other. That concludes our presentation, and we will now open the floor up to any questions.